Hi, thanks so much for joining me. This is Charles from the Courageous Warrior Coalition, here to share with you more tips for first responder mental and physical well being. This is Resiliency Tip Tuesday. joining me again this week as we focus on an issue that is so important to first responders and to everyone really, but first responders especially. And I'm talking about sleep and more specifically quality of sleep and even more specifically than that, sleep deprivation as it relates to first responders. And so one of the first things I want to talk about with you is the unique situation that first responders face in shift work disorder. And shift work disorder is something that you may or may not have heard before. It's been in the news now for um, probably 10 or 15 years. Um, and it is characterized by complaints uh, that a person may have of insomnia. They might have excessive daytime sleepiness or nighttime sleepiness if that's when their shift is. And it usually occurs in people who work hours that are at least in part during the usual nighttime sleep cycle. And when we look at the particular numbers of people that this could impact, there are over 2 million first responders in the United States. And that includes about 1.1 million firefighters, about 900,000 law enforcement officers, and 248,000 emergency medical technicians. And these people are necessarily working at all hours of the day and night. But I'll expand it a little bit further and say that this also includes dispatchers, uh, people working at call centers, um, people working at hospitals. So we tend to focus just on the people who we can see in uniform. However, this is a much bigger problem. And one of the things that we look at is the deprivation that first responders face in their sleep cycles when they work a 24 hour period. And so many firefighters, many EMS paramedics are in organizations where they work a 24 hour work period and then they have a certain number of, of hours off. They may do 24 on, 24 off uh, or, or any combination of, of on off. Uh, but particularly the 24 hour on schedule becomes problematic because that schedule is supposed to allow for some amount of built-in rest time. And the problem becomes when that built-in rest time is interrupted by emergency calls and the firefighters or paramedics um, or someone who's working overtime, perhaps you don't work a 24-hour shift, perhaps you work a 12-hour shift um, and you're now on overtime and you are interrupting your normal sleep patterns. Um, so this is particularly a problem for people that do work the 24 hour shift because you need to respond to calls for service and that can often lead to several interruptions during the normal uh, loud rest period on that shift. So I'm currently referencing a study that was developed by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Sleep Research Society. And that's available on their website. Um, if you wanna search the web for it, um, it is very easy to find. Uh, but their study looked at over uh, 5,000 publications that deal with sleep and sleep hygiene. And they developed a consensus that adults should be sleeping seven hours or more a night to promote optimal health. And that sleeping less than seven hours per night is associated with many adverse health conditions, um, such as weight gain or obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, stroke, even things like depression and increased risk of death from falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, so these are things that are very relevant to first responders. Um, we certainly don't want people falling asleep at the wheel behind a several ton fire truck or people suffering from exhaustion that are trying to concentrate on driving an ill patient to the hospital with lights and sirens. Um, these are things that 
sleeping less than seven hours per night or having constant interruptions of your sleep cycle from calls lead to um, impaired performance, impaired concentration, uh, and that, of course, is problematic when you're operating vehicles. Um, when we look at the law enforcement side of things, you may be responding to a call for service and you're sleep deprived, and that may impair your cognitive functions to be able to react appropriately. It may impair your ability to respond with force to subdue a subject. These are all things that cut across all the different spectrums of first responders, regardless of what occupation that you're in. And we can see it's not a good situation to be in. I think that a lot of research has been done specifically on firefighters though, because of the prevalence of the 24 hour work shift that firefighters have. In that same uh, study done by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, excuse me, um, they took a look at 7,000 firefighters, and they showed that 37% of those firefighters screen positive for a sleep disorder. The most common sleep disorder was obstructive sleep apnea, um, and that's something that I was diagnosed with uh, in my 20s and have worked with my whole life practically at this point. But more common are uh, insomnia, and shift work disorder and restless leg syndrome uh, as well. Insomnia is something that I've also struggled with since I was a child. So these are things, sleep, this is a subject that I take um, very seriously and I see how many of my brother and sister first responders are suffering from these things as well. The firefighters in this particular study who screened positive for these sleep disorders were more likely to report a motor vehicle crash on duty and off, um, falling asleep while driving, uh, cardiovascular disease, depression, and just overall poor health status when they compared them against the group of firefighters who did not test positive for these various sleep disorders. When we look at one of the main causes of death for firefighters specifically is cardiovascular disease. And sleep is, lack of sleep is shown to have a negative effect, negative effect on the cardiovascular system as well. So that already increases a problematic issue in firefighters. When we look at the type of things that happen inside a firehouse as well, and every agency is a little bit different, but sometimes it's promoted to fall asleep on a lazy boy uh, in the, you know, the lounge or the, the squad room uh, and not to have a dedicated sleep space. Um, and really, the suggestions that these experts in sleep medicine gave to the problem of sleep deprivation in first responders, specifically firefighters, were to make sure that they understood positive sleep hygiene. And uh, they also gave them uh, tips on caffeine use, uh, what is good caffeine use versus what is negative caffeine use. And they also provided them with strategies to maximize napping. And this is something that can have a positive effect as well. So let's talk a little bit about each of those things. So sleep hygiene can be discussed as developing a positive schedule for your, your sleep. Um, so if you do have a shift that requires you to stay on for 24 hours, hopefully you're being given a, a short period for rest breaks and you're taking those rest breaks. They should not be in places where you're gonna be frequently disrupted like the main lounge room. Um, there shouldn't be someone playing video games next to you. It should be in an area where you can be given a quiet space to actually rest. Napping is a great tool as long as you keep the duration of the naps to about 15 to 30 minutes. Generally, anything above 30 minutes and the body begins to enter a deeper, more restorative sleep. That can be problematic if you get awakened in a deeper stage of sleep because the body will not recover from that uh, in as good of a way as a short nap. So one of the things that you can do is make sure that you're taking short nap breaks of no more than 30 minutes. That can be quite restorative. Take a couple of those, space them out if you can. 
Um, also make sure that you're using caffeine effectively. There's really no issue with using caffeine as long as you're not over utilizing it and you're not slamming a six pack of soda to try to stay awake all the time. Um, you're not using stimulants and things, supplements to keep you awake. Uh, but a little bit of caffeine is certainly okay. That's what this study revealed. There's also things that you can do when you're actually taking a nap, like using an eye mask to cover your eyes and mimic darkness a little bit better than maybe if there's light coming in. You can also use earplugs to minimize the amount of disruptions uh, from sounds. Those firefighters who did undergo some of these um, educational tips and were part of the group that used them actually reported 24% less official injury reports and less days off due to disability for injuries overall. And so I think it's important to note that sleep hygiene um, is so important to all first responders, but particularly those in the fire and EMS service as well. Um, try to maintain those sleep-wake cycles when you're off. Don't shift your sleep cycle from sleeping during the day when you're on and then sleeping at night when you're off because that's gonna throw off the delicate circadian rhythms that the body really relies on for its sleep-wake cycles. So try to keep those shift-wake cycles the same um, as your off-wake cycles. You may find that timed light exposure might be beneficial. So you can look into, there are um, lights that will mimic uh, sunlight and anything between different intensities between 2300 to 12,000 lux have been studied uh, to mimic sunlight and bright light on, on the face for a few minutes. And that sort of wakes the body up by mimicking sunlight. Uh, these positive effects tend to vary from individual to individual, uh, but I know light exposure is something that can be beneficial to people with uh, shift work disorder. You can look into, ask your doctor about melatonin prior to going to sleep if you have to maintain a daytime sleep schedule. And the study that I referenced uh, showed that there was some benefit to people who needed to sleep during the daytime hours if they uh, took a dose of melatonin anywhere between, in the study, half a milligram to 10 milligrams, the effectiveness of the melatonin did not seem to have any correlation to the strength of the melatonin that was taken. So obviously, talk to your doctor before taking any type of supplement or medication and make sure that it's right for you. But when you talk to your doctor, you can mention this study, you can even go print it out, you could bring it in, because not every doctor is aware of all the different problems that are associated with shift work disorder. The melatonin did seem to improve daytime sleep quality and duration, but it did not seem to correlate, at least in this particular study, to increase alertness during the nighttime shifts. You could also talk to your doctor about some hypnotic medications to promote daytime sleep um, when that's your only option. Um, the carryover of these things can sometimes be problematic if you wake up drowsy at the end of your seven or eight hour uh, sleep cycle. And of course, these type of medications should never be consumed without A, first checking with your doctor and getting a valid prescription, and B, they should never be taken unless you can dedicate a full night to sleep. One particular note is that if you have obstructive sleep apnea, it's very important to be tested for that and diagnosed uh, and to use either your uh, positive pressure airway device, your CPAP, um, or to speak to a sleep dentist and perhaps get a uh, jaw advancer to allow your airway to open. Many people that take these hypnotics to help them sleep are actually not being treated by a sleep professional. They're just taking these sleep medications and they're masking the bigger issue of obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea. So you really need to have a sleep test done and speak to a sleep medicine doctor to make sure that you are having healthy sleep um, once you do fall asleep and that your airway is not being obstructed. Taking um, medications like hypnotics to help you sleep 
if you already have sleep apnea, it can really be a dangerous situation. And I'm sure that if you're a firefighter, if you're an EMT paramedic, you, you already know what I'm talking about. You don't want your airway collapsing while you're asleep and then having heavy hypnotic drugs covering up those effects. That brings us to another issue of, of alcohol and how alcohol is oftentimes thought of as something that's actually going to help with sleep. And many studies, not that particular one that I was referencing before, but many other studies have shown us that that's just not the case, that alcohol, uh, when taken before bedtime, when consumed before bedtime, actually hurts the quality of our sleep. Um, the brain needs to go through several uh, different and distinct sleep cycles before it gets to REM or rapid eye movement, uh, where you're dreaming and where the real restoration of the brain takes place during sleep. And alcohol interrupts those cycles. It may shorten or lengthen the cycle, so you're not getting the correct amount of sleep that your body needs. So while we may feel like it's gonna zonk us out, it's actually giving us less quality sleep. So uh, definitely be careful if you're someone who is thinking that alcohol helps with sleep. Um, and there's also certain stimulants, prescription stimulants that you can take when you're in consultation with your doctor that may help, that are approved um, by the FDA to help people with shift work disorder. And if your doctor, you and your doctor choose that that's uh, the method that you can take, then these things will help to increase your alertness during the day. There are some, uh, there's some evidence to show that caffeine can help with alertness, um, but caffeine can also be overused and you have to make sure that you're not overutilizing caffeine. So finding out what the right amount of caffeine for you is, uh, I would definitely err on the side of caution with that because people can overuse caffeine as a crutch when they're already uh, exhausted. So I would encourage you to speak with your doctor if you're finding any of these things uh, are problematic to you. And I also want to suggest another option for you that we here at the Courageous Warrior Coalition, we're all about providing solutions for mental and physical well-being for first responders. And one of the things that we offer is something that I've experienced myself and I've used myself with some of my sleep problems, and that's called Yoga Nidra. And yoga nidra is a meditative type of yoga that's performed while you're in a relaxed position, either reclined, laying down, uh, seated in a recliner, and just in a comfortable position. And it takes you through a body scan to really identify where you can relax and where you can let go. And yoga nidra has been studied by the U.S. military. They have incorporated yoga nidra into combat zones where soldiers and, and, you know, special forces operators need to be in peak alertness levels for an extended period of time. So this is certainly not something that you can do uh, to replace sleep by any means, but you can certainly add it to your repertoire of things to address shift work disorder because in the studies that the military conducted, Yoga Nidra was 30 minutes of Yoga Nidra was actually found to have the restorative benefits of about three hours of sleep on the body and the brain. So Yoga Nidra is definitely something that you can look into to incorporate a 30 minute guided relaxation. And if you fall asleep, that's okay too. It does not something that you have to concentrate on. The benefits are still there. Um, but Yoga Nidra is something that I have experienced myself and have done it, have practiced it. Um, and it's really something that I think that first responders could benefit from. Like I said, the military's already implemented it into a lot of combat situations where they understand that by the very nature of what's going on, sleep is going to be limited and they need people to take a quick nap and then something where they can be alert um, and do yoga nidra, but still have some restorative benefits as well. So we at the Courageous Warrior Coalition have a couple of Yoga Nidra videos as part of our video library that you could certainly check out and take advantage of. And um, I would certainly welcome you to, to take advantage of those as well as all the other mindfulness and relaxation videos that we produce, uh, which can be great things as you're trying to work your way down into sleep from a long shift or, or a stressful shift. So be sure to check out those things. Um, they can be accessed through our website at CourageousWarriorCoalition.org. 
You can also find us on YouTube by searching Courageous Warrior Coalition. Check us out on all the social media, um, various platforms there. We're at Courageous Warrior Coalition. And uh, join us next time as we continue to delve into more tips for first responders, mental and physical well-being. And you take care of others, so make sure you take care of yourself as well. Thanks so much and stay safe.